जय गोपी जन वल्लभ केवी जय गोपी जन वल्लभ केवी भर धान सौरनंदन भज जनहंसौरनंदन भज जनहंसाय मून तीरा जमुन धीरा हरिया In the Bhagavad Gita, in the 13th chapter, there is five verses together, and these are chapters entitled Nature, the Enjoyer and Consciousness. And in those five verses, it talks about the qualities, characteristics, and also activities of a Vaishnava. So I'll read the translation. Jai Sri Sri Gornatai Ki Jai. These are called the 20 items of knowledge. So Krishna lists them. 
humility, pridelessness, nonviolence, tolerance, simplicity, approaching a bona fide spiritual master, cleanliness, steadiness, self-control, renunciation of the objects of sense gratification, absence of the false ego, the perception of the evil, evil of birth, death, old age, and disease, detachment, freedom from entanglement with children, wife, home, and the rest, even mindedness amid pleasant and unpleasant events, constant unalloyed devotion to me, aspiring to live in a solitary place, detachment from the general mass of people, accepting the importance of self-realization and philosophical search for the absolute truth. All these I declare to be knowledge, and besides this, whatever there may be, is ignorance. So Srila Prabhupada gives a very lengthy report, about six or seven chapters, pages. So I'm going to speak about one of them right now. We'll start off, and that is cleanliness. Cleanliness is essential for making advancement in spiritual life. There are two kinds of cleanliness, external and internal. External cleanliness makes taking the bath, but for internal cleanliness, one has to think of Krishna and always chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. This process cleans the accumulated dust of past karma from the mind. Omagyan timiranda syagyana jana salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri guruvena maha. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. So, so cleanliness is considered to be a very lofty and very important. Of course, here it's mentioned that there are 12, 20 items of knowledge is listed as one of them. And there's two kinds of cleanliness here. Internal means to purify the heart and mind by chanting the holy names of the Lord and engaging in devotional service. And Prabhupada specifically mentions cleaning the mind with the holy name of the Lord. And the mind, the holy name is like a broom. The mind carries dust accumulated from this life and previous lives. What are those dusts? Material attachments, material desires, uh, desires to be the enjoyer, the enjoyer to be the controller. Uh, the principle that keeps the consciousness uh, connected to the material energy. <laughs> and he also mentions that there are external cleanliness, like such as taking a bath. We might also expand on that also. <laughs> In a sense that cleanliness also means simplicity. Simplicity means living according to what you need and not more. In other words, if you have too much material things, or you have things you don't need or don't use, for whatever reason they may occur, accumulate, and then and it's hard to keep things clean and neat and orderly like that. And so it's recommended one should live according to what is needed. Um, we see uh, we are being, what we say, locked down or restricted in our movements. And most people around the world are, are uh, relegated to living or staying into a house. A lot of the external activities have been cut off. So you might say people's lives have been forced into a more simplified lifestyle simply by the disease Disease has caused uh, social uh, distancing and reduction of social, political, and economic activities. Mm -hmm. So it finds that people are more 
not more forced to become more simple in life. <laughs> and uh, the simplicity is found, is found as something that is very conducive to uh, practicing of Krishna consciousness in terms of the external part of simplicity. Of course, simplicity also may, means without duplicity, straightforwardness in all dealings. But the external point is that generally we live too gorgeously. <laughs> uh, we have more things than we need, and therefore we have a tendency to accumulate and to fascinate our, our minds with a lot of junk <laughs> that are just completely unnecessary. There was one king in Africa. Um, when he died, they went into his wife's chambers and she had 3,000 pairs of shoes. 3,000 pairs of shoes. Now you might say, well, is she a, a multi-legged lady? How many legs does she have? Obviously, it's only two. You can't even use 3,000 pairs of shoes if you use the same pair every day for a different pair, I'm sorry, a different pair every day for the next eight and a half years. You still would only have one pair, a different one every day. So obviously, this is a, a gross example of what we say, accumulation of stuff. Uh, fascination with material things. And it, it destroys peace of mind and it also destroys cleanliness because accumulation of stuff makes things a tendency to be unclean. So uh, one should see what's needed. So here's a good time for us to uh, reduce the amount of stuff we have and also to see what is needed and what we don't have, sometimes they say, if you haven't used it for two years, give it away. <laughs> give it away like that. So that's the external part. Internal means to keep everything neat and clean. His divine grace, Srila Prabhupada, talked often about cleanliness, especially in regards to the temple. And of course, we can all say that, say, if we're at home and we have deities in our homes, then our home is also a temple because wherever the Lord resides in his personal form, that's Mandir. Mm -hmm. So keeping the temple of the Lord clean. And Prabhupada said not only the temple room, but the entire temple is the body of the Lord. So every place of the temple should be, as Prabhupada said, revolutionary, clean. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That you can't find one speck of dust anywhere. <laughs> now, you might say, well, that's kind of like fanaticism. No, it's not, actually not. It's actually the standard in order to live within a temple and in your homes also. Just like if you have rugs in your house, they accumulate so much dust, dirt, even if you vacuum them and clean them, they still remain dirty. Mm -hmm. Rugs are by nature uh, attraction, attractors of dust and dirt. Mm -hmm. But just in general, there are three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. And dirtiness, uncleanliness, is considered to be a quality or a feature of the mode of ignorance. Sometimes, we see that when things get so dirty or unclean, the residents of the establishment decide to do something. So they have a big program and they start cleaning everything. And everything gets cleaned. So they take the mode of ignorance, dirtiness, and bring it to the mode of goodness, cleanliness, using the mode of passion, activity. <laughs> but what happens is that the mode of goodness will not maintain and therefore again falls into ignorance if we live in the mode of passion. 
In other words, if we live in the mode of passion, we simply respond to a situation. Whereas the mode of goodness is a mode of maintenance. Maintenance means to bring something up to a standard and keep it there simply by the lifestyle and the consciousness that we develop. And Prabhupada would say, if you walk into a dirty room and you don't feel uncomfortable, that means you're in the same consciousness as what created that room. <laughs> in other words, if you walk into a place and it's dirty and you don't become upset, just like if you mix oil and water together, they don't mix. So, or if you take water and you throw it on fire, there's a, a reaction. So if there's not a reaction to dirtiness, that means we're of the same consciousness of the place that is dirty. <laughs> so what is that consciousness that everything should be clean? That's why we say it's one of the godly principles. But in some statements we find in the Shastras, cleanliness is not next to godliness, it is godliness. <laughs> there are statements, cleanliness is godliness. And so we see that those who have practiced Krishna consciousness very carefully and pre precisely follow the principles of Brahminical life. And the, one of the highest principles, or one of the foremost principles is cleanliness. Out of all of the qualities, all of the Brahminical qualities, cleanliness and truthfulness reign supreme, especially uh, truthfulness, but cleanliness is a, is a close second. So keeping things clean, keeping things neat, keeping things orderly, keeping things simple, creates a good consciousness because if we're in a dirty place, we can't really maintain proper consciousness. Everything should be super clean. I know, so I know one particular devotee, he is noted for his standard of cleanliness. And he will walk into a room and run his finger along over the top of the ledges on the higher parts of the room. And if he finds any speck of dust, he will say, what is this? This is dirty. <laughs> so yeah, this is a good quality. When Prabhupada came to Vrindavan, Prior to his arrival, the temple president did a maha cleanup of the temple, and everything was spotlessly clean. And when Prabhupada came, he showed Prabhupada around to the different places within the temple. And finally, they came to one area, up on the roof area, and in one quarter of the roof area, there was some dust, some dirt. Prabhupada said, what is this? Although everything was else was spotless, Prabhupada was able to notice one area was a little unclean. And he said, clean it immediately. And then he also said, the business, not the business, but the main business of a temple president is to keep everything clean. And we understand, whereas deities and deity worship, there are three principles, cleanliness, functionality, and simplicity. These are the three principles which govern the activities of deity worship. And especially cleanliness, because if we're not simple, it's hard to keep everything clean. And keeping everything clean means deity worship goes on nicely. So, and Prabhupada was very keen on making this point in his lectures, keep everything clean. Suchi, not Muchi, <laughs> as he would say. So keeping everything clean means the consciousness becomes clean. And it's actually a great service to clean something, keep it pa. Material world is by nature dirty. Disease is a symptom of dirtiness. <laughs> Prabhupada says disease is caused by three things. Anxiety, uncleanliness, and overeating. He said this causes 
uncleanliness. So yeah, uh, anxiety causes one mind and body not to function properly and one will become diseased. Uncleanliness, obviously, when something is unclean, it attracts uh, dirt and attracts those entities which are dirty. And then disease will come and can come, many times it does. And of course, uh, overeating, we also know, makes can cause one to become sick also. So these three are very important, and therefore Brahman means Suchi. Prabhupada made some pretty strong statements. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 12th canto, in one verse in the 12th canto, it mentions that each of the four varnas, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Sudra, will have a certain outstanding disqualification in the age of Kali. And he mentions the disqualification, the verse actually mentions the disqualification for the, for, I'm sorry, the four ashrams, not the four varnas, the four ashrams, uh, Grihasta, Brahmachari, Sanyas, and Vanapras. He said for the Grihasta ashram, the quality that is outstanding in the mode, in the, in the age of Kali, is Grihastas will tend not to give in charity. They will not be charitable. For Vanaprastas, it says they will fail to go to the forest, of course. Vana means forest and prasta means dweller. Forest dweller. Of course, in our Krishna consciousness society, we don't generally live in the forest, but we're in the forest of the material energy. <laughs> Sometimes it's mentioned material world is like a forest. But that's mentioned as the outstanding disqualification of the, of the Vanapras. For sannyasis, the outstanding disqualification is sannyasis will keep wealth. They'll have money. Prabhupada would sometimes say to the Grihastas, if you need money, go to the sannyasis. This is not an understatement, it's a fact. <laughs> and for the brahmacharis, it says brahmacharis will be unclean. It says that in the Bhagavatam, 12th canto, 3rd chapter. I don't remember the exact verse, but you can find it. When Prabhupada sometimes would come to a temple, they would give him a tour of the temple. One time he walked into the Brahmachari ashram, he looked around, he said, yes, Brahmachari means unclean. <laughs> he was being facetious, he was being critical. So yeah, we need to keep things very, very clean because it can attract what we say disease. And just by being unclean, it is opposite of the practice of Krishna consciousness, where everything is suchi. It says in the spiritual world, everything is always clean. But still, the Lakshmis in the palaces in Vaikuntha, they're cleaning. They clean, although everything is already clean. Why? Because they like to serve by cleaning. <laughs> so, yeah how important this principle is. And so we should uh, try to understand that. Um, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, we can read it in the Chaitanya Charitamrita just prior to the Hrathiyatra festival did the cleansing of the Gundicha temple where more than 100 of his followers along with Lord Chaitanya spent the whole day cleaning the Gondesha temple. They washed every part of the temple, the boga room, the deity room, the floors, the walls, the ceilings, 
You can hear he talks about how they took water and threw it on the ceilings. They cleaned everything so clean. And after that, when everything was done, Lord Chaitanya said, let's clean it again. So they did it a second time. And he said, anybody who, who won the one who gets the most dust, accumulated dirt, particles, straw, will get Mahaprasadam as a reward. Jagannath Mahaprasad. So he made it competitive like that. And uh, Lord Chaitanya won the competition. He was able to find more dirt than anybody. <laughs> but after they cleaned it the second time, he said, we should clean it and we should clean the courtyard too. So they went outside in the courtyard and cleaned the courtyard. So that was, so that's synonymous to cleaning the heart. The temple is also compared, the heart's also compared to the temple. Where does the Lord reside? The Lord resides in the temple. The heart is the temple. The Lord resides into the heart of his devotee. So keeping the heart clean means being free from, uh, let me see, Kama, Kroda, Lopa, Mohan, Madha, Matsarya, and Baya. So these are lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, envy, and fear. These are the negative features that enter into the mind and heart of the conditioned soul and keep them relegated to materialistic sinful activities. So cleaning the heart, cleaning the temple, and of course the temple, the Lord resides in his personal temple as the deity. So keep everything clean. And Prabhupada was very, very enthusiastic to make sure everything is clean in our Krishna consciousness society. So sometimes it's nice to do a marathon, engage all the devotees and slow down on the other activities and just clean, clean, and clean. It cleans the heart, cleans the mind, and ultimately cleans the temple. And those of you who are living in your homes, it's also a nice, way to uh, purify the home, cleanse the home, make everything neat, clean. Then the home becomes like a temple. So cleanliness is godliness. It's a very important principle. Otherwise, if we remain dirty or unclean or less than clean, our consciousness will be also be affected by that atmosphere. <laughs> and of course, disease can also come. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are some principles that we can follow. Um, of course, there are many, many statements in the Shastras that talks about internal cleanliness, which means to chant the holy names of the Lord, to worship the Lord in his deity form, to purify the heart, by hearing about the Lord and external cleanliness in the form of keeping every, taking bath, keeping one's clothes clean like that. It's an austerity of the body. In the Bhagavad Gita, in the 17th chapter, talks about austerities of the body. One is called um, cleanliness. I'll read something else. Here it says, those who are demoniac do not know what is to be done and what is not to be done. Neither cleanliness nor proper behavior is found within them. So therefore, Dirtiness is a quality of the demons, or it's a demoniac quality. Prabhupada said one should keep his body clean by bathing, brushing teeth, 
shaving, changing clothes, etc. Like that. These are some of the principles mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Like that. Lack of cleanliness is also mentioned here. Um, is a demoniac quality. <laughs> okay, so these are some things we can think about. And of course, in the 16th chapter, the first three verses describe the qualities of a, of a saintly person, and again, cleanliness is mentioned there. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions or comments about this point? Cleanliness either internally or externally. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, thank you for the lecture. Um, my question is, does the internal cleanliness outweigh the external cleanliness? For example, we know that some sages in the past did not uh, pay attention to external cleanliness. For example, it is said that Shravyasadev had black teeth and um, other examples. Mm, well, if you're living in the Himalayas, then you might find your standard of cleanliness is a little different. <laughs> so if you're living outside in the wild, in the wilderness, you're mostly focusing on external, internal cleanliness. If you're living in a temple, both are equally important. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you'll find the sages, sometimes they only had one piece of cloth. So they would take it at the end of the day they would wring it, out, wash it in the river and hang it up, and then the next morning they would wear that again. So they were very simple. And so for them, external cleanliness was quite natural or easy. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> I noticed that. Uh, Mm -hmm. technical functionality uh, adds to cleanliness. It means mm -hmm. when things are technically functioning, then uh, we tend to uh, keep it clean, keep things clean which are functional. But if we neglect uh, maintaining this technical functionality, then even cleanliness goes down, and of course consciousness. So, what is what is that? What is that thing that we're neglecting? Cooking and equipment in the temple, in the car, or anywhere else. The things are not. are not uh, functioning properly, then we just, uh, or if they are old, then it's more difficult to keep. Yeah. 
Well, we should uh, keep things nice. There are people who have the, th the same thing for years and years and it doesn't become less because they know how to maintain it. As we said before, maintenance is is more important quality than creation and destruction. As Brahma is the cause of creation, Vishnu is the maintainer, and Shiva is the destroyer. So we find maintenance is the mode of goodness. Maintenance is something that one has to practice in order to make it happen. So keeping things maintained, we maintain our spiritual life by regularly chanting the holy names, following the principles, regularly reading. If well, we neglect some of our spiritual practices, then it's we start to gravitate downward in our spiritual strength. And to get it back up means to make a concerted effort. So the thing is to keep it, get it up and keep it up. <laughs> Once you stop, uh, start to uh, develop your standard of practice, one should maintain it. The same with, with the external part of our environment. And we need to keep things clean, neat, simple, and free from clutter. <laughs> when you walk into a place that's not clean, your mind becomes a little disturbed. Sometimes you're not even noticing it, but it does. <laughs> So the material world is is a dirty place. <laughs> when Prabhupada was on one morning walk in Mayapur with uh, many of his leading disciples, these were all the sannyasis at that time, all the leading men in the entire Iskan society. See, so Prabhupada was talking about war. He was talking, the tape is called the World War III tape, where Prabhupada was talking about the upcoming war that would come. And one leading sannyasi talked about, well, nuclear holocaust, and if everything, if there's nuclear weapons, then everything gets contaminated. And then he said, nobody can live here. And Prabhupada said, yes, that's true. Nobody can live here anyway. The material world is a place of death. Nobody can stay here. And it's by nature always contaminated, whether it's contaminated by nuclear weapons, it's contaminated by coronavirus, <laughs> it's contaminated by pollution, it's contaminated by the sinful activities of the living entities. It's a contaminated place. <laughs> Prabhupada said, material world is like a, like a hospital. And the inhabitants of a hospital, they have a disease. What is that disease? Material desires. So therefore, he says, as long as you live in the material world, you have to be very careful not to be infected by the material atmosphere which is full of passion and ignorance. Even if you are careful, still it's very difficult to maintain freedom from the contamination of this world. So therefore, to be, practice Krishna consciousness means to be very, very uh, aware that, that this material energy can always push one backward in consciousness, or externally by making everything dirty. So, and Prabhupada ended his talk by saying, therefore in a hospital there is two types of uh, cures. There is, there is the medicine and there is the proper diet. When a person gets sick, they give them certain medicines and they change their diet to make it conducive to their health. So Prabhupada said the proper diet, the proper medicine is chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And the proper diet is Krishna Prasad. <laughs> like that. And he said, these two things are the, uh, the applications of the cure for material disease. <laughs> so keep everything simple and you'll find it's easy to keep everything clean. <laughs> Simple living, high thinking, not high living and no thinking. <laughs> when you're living too extravagantly, you have no time to think about those things that are important, such as Krishna and the deeper principles of, that make Krishna consciousness what it is. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Yes, Maharaj, there is a question from the internet. Uh, it goes like this. What can we do when, as a guest, you want to keep up your standard, but don't want to hurt the host with cleaning or rearranging things in their place? You're coming into a person's house, and you're the guest, and uh, you're living there, or you're just visiting? <laughs> You're visiting, well, if you walk into a... Uh, I think one devotee was telling me that he was invited to lunch at one of his disciples' house. And uh, when he walked into that place, he said, I'm not staying here. <laughs> and he, he took his disciple along with the disciple's friend, and they went someplace else. <laughs> it was just unclean. And his, his standard of cleanliness is very, very pristine, very high. So, uh, yeah, a lot of times we may feel like we want to leave the place. But the thing is, if, if we're invited to come to a person's house and we see that it's very unclean, we might not want to commit an offense by criticizing the host, but at the same time, we should be an example for what we want to teach others. So we should keep our own place clean, keep our own self very clean and be an example. And then what you can do is invite that same person to your house and let them see what is the standard. <laughs> uh, nobody likes a dirty place. It's just whether you're a spiritualist or a materialist, any with, anyone with any what we say, uh, intelligence doesn't feel comfortable in a place that is unclean. <laughs> so it's, uh, when you're a guest, it's a little bit hard to uh, adjust the situation, but you may, you may say, oh, I see you didn't have time to clean. Can I help you clean? That's one of the things you can do when you walk into a person's house, they invite you. Oh, I see you've been too busy doing so many things. Let me help you clean. Maybe they'll get the hint. <laughs> That's one way of sending a message. Huh? <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Cleanliness is godliness. <laughs> Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So we do, should we do uh, Kundichu Marjanam here? <laughs> My 